Hey everyone, it is Havo High here with Avengers Endgame coming right around the corner. I was compelled to make this video of my rankings for all 21 MCU movies prior to this final chapter of the culmination of 10 years of movie magic. Now for those who know my channel, I do mostly Dragon Ball Z and Dokkan Battle content with a sprinkle of other things. However, I do love a lot of other properties like the MCU, DC, Star Wars, Game of Thrones, pretty much all sci-fi, fantasy, and of course anime. So if you are new to my channel, like, subscribe, comment below, do all that good stuff. Uh, also know I do not edit any of my videos, so this is just going to be me rambling on for the next several minutes. Uh, also note, I might be talking about details of the movie that are spoilers if you haven't seen the film before, so this is a fair warning. So shout out to IMDB for the movie poster images, and of course Dokkan Wiki for the icons. And speaking of those icons, uh, this is how I'm going to be ranking the movies. So uh, this is the ranking system. As you can see, the icon represents the heart, a uh, red fist, and a armor. And those represents the, uh, the heart represents the emotional and passion of the movie. Now when I say emotion, it's not necessarily moving me to tears, but also the joyous parts of the movie. It's the, uh, it's the co comedic aspects. So um, that's really gonna be the focus on that heart icon there. The, Red Fist, of course, is going to be talking about the action, the impact, the pacing. How excited am I? Uh, the hype for this movie uh, when I watched it. So, and then finally, the armor is going to be memorable. Is it is it memorable? Is it rewatchable? Uh, how many times have I seen this movie? And do I still enjoy it? So, uh, the scoring system pretty basic: one through ten. The highest score being thirty. So, let's go ahead and get right into it, starting with movie number 21 or ranking number 21 and this is almost a consensus consensus in the community and that is number 21 thor the dark world 2013 director alan taylor it scored a 13 <laughs> out of 30 um and let's look at that low score there this is the only mcu movie i went to the theater excited and left going that was unmemorable i didn't really care uh i i left there i think more confused than anything else uh it really didn't remotely do anything for me and i've only seen it twice i've seen it in the theater once and i remember going to the snack bar and going man i don't feel like i'm missing much i'm gonna get some ice cream i'm gonna get some additional popcorn <laughs> and i i didn't really want to run back into the movie um and then i saw it again at home and just really haven't seen it since now i remember you know, this movie had some decent action to it, especially, the, you know, the final battle with Thor and Loki. But the emotional aspect, the passion of this, man, it was very lacking. I, I thought uh, Natalie Portman as Jane in this movie just did not work for me. Uh, with the death of Thor's mom, I, I didn't feel like that was really earned at all. It was just all of a sudden. Uh, didn't really have an emotional impact there. And yeah, just uh, it's a forgettable movie, and that's why a lot of people, you know, put this in the bottom of the list. And this is on the rock bottom of number 21, Thor: The Dark World. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to number 20. Number 20 might surprise. Actually, number 19 and 20 might surprise a lot of people. And uh, number 20 for me is Iron Man 3, 2013, director Shane Black. And I like Shane Black movies. Uh, but this movie, again, was another one of those going, what is going on? Who are these people? Who are these villains? Uh, I thought the Mandarin was like, oh, this is going to be perfect. This is going to be great. We're going to see some magic in uh, the MCU. This is, of course, prior to uh, Doctor Strange. And uh, man, did it fall short of that because this is the Trevor aspect. <laughs> it's Trevor did not work for me. Uh, I've only seen this movie about probably three to four times. I remember seeing this twice in the movie theater and I hated the experience for both of them because uh, most of the friends that I went with, they said, what, what's going on with this Trevor character? What is, is this a joke? And I go, yeah, this is a joke that's not working. Uh, so definitely not memorable for me, but did have some really great action sequences and it was really exciting kind of throughout the movie with the battles, uh, you know, Operation Clean Slate, uh, things of that nature at the end. Uh, but once again, the emotional aspect of it all, I, I once again could care less about the villains and Trevor. I'm sorry, you know, Ben Kinsley, you are an amazing actor, but uh, yeah, this wasn't 
Iron Man's best moment, in my opinion. A lot of other people may disagree with me because uh, I, I know a lot of people when they do the rankings here move this a lot higher than the second to the bottom. So coming in at uh, number 20 is Iron Man 3 with a 15 score. Sadly, sadly, number 19 is Iron Man 2. This was a surprise to me and how I scored it, but I was kind of true to my um, emotions and and when the last time I seen this movie here, I, it was only 15.5, so half a point better than uh, Iron Man 3 is Iron Man 2, the 2010 movie with Jon Favreau uh, directing. So here's the reason why I did not I still really don't like this movie because I do hold Iron Man 1 in very very high regards and both of these sequels just landed flat for me and you'll see how high I've actually put uh, Iron Man the original uh, in my list but once again I haven't really seen this movie this movie over and over again uh, possibly four times uh, mostly at home yes it was the introduction of you know the Avengers initiative but man, I just, uh, Tony Stark's character here being vulnerable, you know, dying from the, or uh, sick from the uh, Palladium, and, um, and the introduction of Whiplash, I thought that character really took me out of it. I thought it was just strange, you know, how this shirtless guy with these things, uh, you know, get into Monaco, you know, shouldn't it be stops, a metal detector or something, so, <laughs> I don't know, it just, a lot of it didn't make sense to me, Justin Hammer was annoying, I think it was written that way to, for him to be annoying, but I, I know there's a lot of Justin Hammer fans out there, I'm just not one of them, uh, decent ac action sequences, I actually thought uh, Iron Man 3 had better, uh, and, yeah, I don't know, uh, Don Cheadle as the new roadie was okay, but, you know, it, I don't know, I guess it kind of messed with me. So coming in number 19 is Iron Man 2 um, with a 15.5 score here. So number 18. Number 18 is, uh, I think a lot of people put this on the bottom of the list because of the lack of continuity. Because this is the Incredible Hulk 2008 version of the director uh, Lewis uh, Letterer uh, scoring a 17. So I've actually seen this movie more and this movie has been around longer than the other three that are on the bottom of my list so it's a little bit unfair but it only scored a four anyway and it's unfortunately forgettable because of the lack of continuity with Edward Norton as the Hulk we know now Mark Ruffalo has been the Hulk for the majority of the time of the MCU and but man watching this movie over again the you know the abomination sequence at the uh, at the final scene was incredible I think Tim Roth really steals the show in this movie so you know there is a little bit of more emotional pull here with the relationship with Liv Tyler uh, so I, I think this is a definitely underrated movie uh, but it still scored really low on my list at number 18 so let's go ahead and move on to number 17 number 17 is the first Thor um, when I saw this movie I actually liked it more than probably where it is now, scoring 18.5. And this was in 2000, uh, you know, 11. This is with director Kenneth Branagh. Um, unfortunately, it, it's it's just I, I've seen this probably five times, six times now, and it's it hasn't gotten better every time I watch it. It's just kind of kept me going. Yeah, this is a good origin story for Thor. You know, it's it's cute, it's interesting, it's a fish out of water story. You know, Thor coming to, to Earth and being cast away on there. Some decent action sequences, primarily in the beginning. Uh, not so much kind of in the middle or even at the end of the movie. Uh, with Loki and, uh, and was it, the Destroyer. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 it is not probably as high as I would want it to be. Just because of the rewatchability, uh, at the score it's, is a lot lower than I actually even expected. But coming in number 17 with 18.5 score is the original Thor. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to number 16. Number 16 is Ant-Man and the Wasp. Um, this movie was alright. Uh, you know, after watching Infinity War, <laughs> it's tough to then watch this movie and go, eh, you know, it's it's comparing it it's tough so uh this was if in 2018 the director is peyton reed it scored a 19.5 you know of course a higher score than most of the, the the lower ones on there had 
decent act action sequences. Uh, it is rewatchable in a sense because it does have that ending um, scene, which you know definitely coincides with going to be Endgame and an Infinity War, uh, and or the post credit scene that is. So it is fun to watch. It has some interesting new characters in, in here, but I think the emotional portions of this movie, you know, with the reunion uh, of um, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting <laughs> the actress's name with Michelle Pfeiffer, um, you know, as the mom of Evangeline Lily, the Wops, the Wops character. It didn't hit me as hard as other movies, so I only scored it a six. But I saw what they're trying to do, and but the comedy definitely wasn't as strong as the original Ant Man. So, with the 19.5 re reasonable score there, um, uh, coming in number 16 is Ant Man and the Wasp. So let's move on to now the top 15. Coming in number 15 is Avengers: Age of Ultron. Now the only reason why this one is still kind of high and not lower. It's actually tied with Ant-Man the Wasp, actually. So I just ended up actually putting this one at number 15. So 15 and 16 is a tie. Um, this is director Joss Whedon. And uh, kind of where he was the downfall of Joss Whedon uh, with this movie here. This was just a total mess of a, of a movie. Um, it had various different things it was trying to accomplish. And uh, <laughs> it... The action was great. It scored an 8 on action, on hype. I thought the trailer was better than the movie in it itself. And uh, yeah, Ultron, they could have just did so much more with that character. And it just fell short of being an ultimate um, amazing movie comparable to the first one. This is the, you know, the sequel to the original Avengers. So rewatchability, man, I... I have I've rewatched this only a few times. Uh, it has some memorable moments, of course, with so Sokovia and going into Civil War through Soviet uh, Sokovia uh, Accords. You know there are yeah, and Vision and then the hammer um, pull uh, or trying to lift up Molnir. There's some interesting scenes on here, but just overall, it definitely fell flat. But it, it was fun to watch, and it was some excitement. Uh, that's why I did score a very high score in the um, the action arena. So, coming in at number 14 with a 20.5. So one point, and when it's one point above, it's actually a high high leap. Uh, so coming in at number um, 14 is Guardian Galaxies Volume Two. Again, another sequel that didn't live up to the original. Uh, with James Gunn, I thought this movie was fairly forced. It didn't feel organic like the first one. Uh, There's a lot of, you know, comedy that for me was funny, but it just didn't fit in. Uh, the whole ego uh, storyline was okay. Um, they try to, you know, take a little serious approach there, but I don't know. The action sequences really weren't um, that thrilling to me. I did like the beginning of the movie, uh, and I wish they would have maybe stuck with the, you know, maybe an Adam Warlock type of spin. I don't know if that's going to happen in, in Volume Three, but uh, but yeah, it was it was a good movie, and uh, that's why I did score over 20, which is a solid score, and it's going to be tight from here on out. But uh, I've watched this a few times, and enjoyable, comedic, just felt forced, like I said before. So coming in number 14, Gar Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Number Two. And uh, going into 13 here, 13 is the newest movie, newest installment prior to Endgame, and that is Captain Marvel. Uh, directors uh, Anna Boden and Ryan Fleck uh, scored a 21. I enjoyed this movie, but to a point. Um, I thought the action sequences were really, really nice. Uh, it was you know, very thrilling. There is some uh, hype to this with, uh, with young Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury. Uh, with the, um, the scrolls, I thought very memorable and also rewatchable. However, the emotional aspect that this movie was trying to do and trying to accomplish just wasn't there. Uh, also, the comedy that they tried just didn't really hit 
as hard as they probably wanted to, but it was okay. It was fine, and, and that's why I did score a 21 and kind of average scores all across the board when it comes to those uh, uh, the emotional response to action and the rewatchability and memorability. So uh, she does go Super Saiyan at the end of the movie, so that was cool uh, being a Dragon Ball fan. So uh, coming in number 13 is Captain Marvel. Um, now going into number 12. Number 12 is the original Ant-Man. Now it only just beat out Captain Marvel just by a little tiny bit, 0.5. But uh, this was a very, very funny movie. If you kind of correlate this with Captain Marvel, um, this movie did not take itself too seriously. It was a, a very good comedy that was in a superhero environment. And uh, it did give your your average scores of seven. Seven is a is a great score, uh, but you know only having uh, just a little bit squeaking out over Captain Marvel with the emotional aspects because of the comedy. I laughed a lot during this movie. Uh, action sequences weren't really you know epic, but they were still good. And I've rewatched this actually a, a several times, and I've I've had fun every single time I've rewatched it. So uh, good job, Paul Rudd, and uh, the entire group there. So coming in at number 11 is another installment in a origin story, uh, and that is Doctor Strange. So Doctor Strange uh, scored a, a nice score of 22.5, and the highest score being the action. Man, it was a trip watching this movie. It was uh, had some really cool sequences. I think the beginning sequence of Doctor Strange and uh, the Ancient One fighting um, ben Mendelsohn's character, right? um, uh, Cassilius. Um, that was a tremendous scene. And they tried to recreate it kind of toward the end, but man, I I was like, wow, I'm really into this movie. Now, it had some slow points, of course, you know, trying to build up Doctor Strange and give you his backstory as a doctor. But when he started training and Wong stole the movie for me, uh, I, I cared about that character a lot. And uh, yeah, overall, very, very good movie. And uh, definitely rewatchable, and definitely had some uh, incredible, memorable moments uh, with the Santorums and, um, uh, and and just you know uh, Dormammu, all these different things. I was like, wow, this is finally magic has appeared in the MCU, uh, which the Mandarin could have did that in Iron Man three. But you know, anyway, once again, that's that was a long time ago on the list. So now let's go ahead and break into the top ten. The top 10 here, so the top 10 starts with Captain America First Avenger. Now Captain America First Avenger for me is very high because I've actually seen this movie over and over again and I couldn't watch the first half of this movie consistently. Now the second half for me, the action sequences, like kind of the, um, uh, the like almost like a training montage uh, for the, the action, I, I, you know, it was okay. <laughs> and um, but like I said, the 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 heartwarming story of Steve Rogers growing up and becoming um, you know Captain America is fantastic. So the rewatchability is great. Like I said, the action sequences is just kind of right there in the seven. But there's a lot of heart in this movie, and uh, no one kind of knew <coughs> that Chris Evans could have played you know the Human Torch and then into Captain America, but he did a wonderful job, and it still is one of my favorite characters in the MCU. So coming in number 10 with a score of 23.5 is uh, the first Avenger with director Joe Johnson, uh, or Johnston. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to number nine. Number nine is Black Panther, uh, the huge hit in 2018 with director Ryan Coogler. Uh, yeah, great movie. Just, you know, what can you say? It was very impactful. Uh, it had amazing sequences on there. What are those? Some great memorable moments. Um, you know, and just seeing Wakanda come to life is a very, very powerful thing as a comic book fan. So uh, scoring a nice score of 24.5. Coming at number nine is, um, you know, Killmonger himself. That he, he, you know, I'll tell you what, uh, um, Michael B. Jordan was one of the best villains, and you can just, you know, have that sympathy for what he wanted to uh, accomplish as uh, redeeming himself uh, as an outcast for from Wakanda. I don't know. I just I'm rambling on here, but I thought he just did a great job. Um, and Chadwick Boseman is the Black Panther has done very very well from there. So anyway. Uh, 
great movie great scores uh there so let's go ahead and go into number eight and number eight is spider-man homecoming squeaking out over black panther and really boils down to heart here and the emotional aspects of, of this this is that whole john hughes version of spider-man the spider-man we always wanted uh the kid uh and who can forget you know you know uh, marissa torme has uh, the hot uh, Aunt May, and uh, now it did score kind of average, um, you know, number seven. It's not average. It's a, it's a good score, much more, much better than some of the other ones. But the action sequences, uh, the pacing, uh, they could have been uh, done a little bit better. But the heart is really where this movie is where it's at. I cared about all the characters here. Michael Keaton killed it as Vulture. Uh, you know, I just was waiting for him to say I'm Batman. Uh, but uh, you know, overall, this movie I've rewatched it multiple times and come with it every single time. You know, having a great feeling and uh, a great score, 25. But like I said, from here on out, it's going to be half a point to a point is going to be uh, you know squeaking out the differences from uh, from each rank. So coming in at number eight is Spider-Man: Homecoming, 2017. Director John Watts. Coming to number seven, lucky number seven is Thor Ragnarok. How fun was this? Taika Wat- uh, you know, Wakiti. Uh, I, I always say that wrong. Taika Wakiti. Um, uh, scoring number, uh, scoring a twenty-six. Action sequences were amazing on this. I can watch this movie and just uh, enjoy the fight scenes, the pacing everything jeff goldblum come on he was great in this movie uh the fight between thor and hulk uh hella was hella good uh, in this movie she was uh a surprise you know uh, you know from from the past we knew that you know mcu villains weren't really overly great but hella was uh was to be reckoned with destroying molnir you know uh basically you know, casting out and destroying the uh, the the, the current Asgardian location, right? So I, I thought it was just incredible. You know, Loki and Thor teaming up had some heart there, and you can just rewatch this with Immigrant Song in the background all day long, every day, and you'll feel incredible. So come in at number seven with a 26 score. Here is Thor Ragnarok. Okay, I say that name right, Taika Watiti. So anyway, uh, come in at number six is Captain America Civil War. Uh, man, great scores. Nine across the board. So from here on out, it's just nitpicking, right? N- this nitpicking. So nine across the board. Score of a 27, rank number six. Uh, directors Anthony Russo and Joe Russo, the Russo brothers, uh, do it again. And uh, this movie was thought to be impossible because look at the cast. And really, this is the Avengers 2.5. This was... Uh, uh, yeah, a lot of people really didn't think this was a Captain America movie. I kind of agree. It was a story of Captain America um, and also the Winter Soldier and really Iron Man, right? So it was more in those three realms of of uh, Iron Man versus Captain America and, you know, the split up because of the Scovio uh, Accords. But, of course, that's, that ending, uh, that spin with uh, um, uh, Tony Stark finding out how his parents died. So... Yeah, uh, airport scene, can't go wrong with it, uh, you know, Black Panther, um, yeah, just all, all in all, just a fantastic, fantastic movie, and uh, yeah, coming in number six is Captain America Civil War. Now, top five, uh, probably a surprise to a lot of individuals with number five, it is Guardians of the Galaxy. I, you know, this is a crowd favorite, but man, when I saw this movie the first time, it really is a, a, a big special place in my heart. Um, and that's really where it beat Civil War, was a little bit more heart. Uh, whereas Civil War, there was just so many characters you did care about, but there's some that you were just you know forgetful about because there's just so many characters. This had a lot of characters as well, but man, did they, did they you know, create and... Uh, and have a storyline that you really did, uh, you know, understand where all these characters come from. So, you know, James Gunn did a very, very good job in directing this piece. And unlike Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, this was not forced. This was very organic. And the soundtrack, come on. It was just, 
you know, that's why I almost, I almost gave this a 10 when it came to the heart there, uh, because it had amazing comedy, it had everything there, but that tell end, you know, Ronan was just a villain that you're like, ah, eh, kind of really didn't care about, uh, but you know, it did explain a lot about the Infinity Stones in this movie, and this is definitely a huge rewatchable movie over and over again, so 27.5, uh, 0.5 better than Silver War, coming in at number 5, top 5, Guardians of the Galaxy, number 1, so, uh, number 4, probably the biggest surprise, number 4, rather than number 5, is the original Iron Man, yes, from Iron Man 2 and 3, way down in the list. Iron Man, to me, of course, is the movie that started it all. But man, I've rewatched this movie over and over and over again. And it does have the advantage of being the first MCU movie that ever come out. And every time it's on TV, I watch it. Every time it's on you know TV, I, I flick to it. And that's why I got a 10. It has those memorable moments of Tony Stark becoming Iron Man. I am Iron Man. And it just really has a lot of this memory for me and uh, uh, and what rewatchability for me that over all the MCU movies, it's one of my favorites to just sit back, relax, and reminisce in a sense. I know a lot of people had issues with Act Three. I didn't really have too much problems with Jeff Bridges uh, uh, and the, you know the final suit. Uh, on there, I, I thought it was fine. So in the action sequences uh, were good, but maybe not the best. Uh, and that's why it scored an eight. It could have been higher, but then the heart, like I said, I cared about all these characters here, even the non Don Ch Don Cheadle uh, <laughs> yeah, with Terrence Howard as uh, Rhodey there. And I and I enjoyed Gwyn Gwyneth Paltrow in this movie versus the other two, which I kind of didn't care about. Now. Uh, this this here uh, Pepper Potts here this version uh, for me was the the best one out of all of them. So coming in at number four, Iron Man 2008, director John Favreau, 27.5. Now top three, man, this video is going long. Uh, so number three is the first Avengers. Avengers 2012, director Joss Whedon, scoring that 28. Once again, just a half a point here, half a point there. And uh, yeah, what can you say about this movie? This 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 was it. This was when it all came together, and you're like, this is kind of the same feeling that you're having for Endgame, right? When this movie came out originally, everybody wanted to see it. Everybody wanted to see all these standalone characters come together: Iron Man, Thor, Captain America. Uh, you know, Hulk didn't really have its own standalone with Mark Ruffalo, but. Man, this was so epic, so good. The action sequences are great. Loki was incredible as the villain uh, in this. Of course, Thanos was in the background. Um, all the characters you cared about uh, had great comedic moments. You know, Hulk you know, with Thor, uh, Shwarma, uh The seriousness, the emotional aspect of this was very strong as well. Uh, with Iron Man, you know, trying to, you know save the world by sacrificing himself you kind of felt the gravity of this movie and man did they do a really really good job and this movie feels long too at running at two hours and 23 minutes man endgame going over three hours is going to be very very interesting so coming in number three is the original avengers here and coming in number two where i think this one is number one for a lot of people is the third chapter of the avengers and that's avengers Infinity War. Avengers Infinity War um, was incredible. I think uh, the story, this is Thanos, you can say Avengers Thanos is really the movie here. It is the best villain of all the MCU uh, movies and uh, action was great. It did have a couple pacing issues for me because it was it was too fast, right? Because they, they were non-apologetic with you better have watched some of these other movies to watch Infinity War, or you're not gonna get all the references. So fortunately, of course, I've I've seen all of them, all of them, and I got the re -reference, uh, references, and it is definitely rewatchable. And of course, there were huge memorable moments across the board. You know, the snap, of course, being the number one uh, memorable moment here. But you know, one point away from a perfect score. Yes, coming in at number two, Avengers: Infinity War. Anthony Russo, Joe Russo, the Russo brothers doing it again uh, with a, a score of 29 almost perfect and there's only one movie in my opinion that is the best Marvel movie and that is 
Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Almost having a perfect score, I did put it at 9.5. I'll tell you the reason why when it comes to memorable and rewatchability. Um, yeah, which is it's not a huge excuse. I could have easily put it at 10 as well, but 29.5. Uh, thinking about putting 10 across the board, but the only flaw here is this is not the, the movie that I've rewatched the most. The one I've rewatched most, I said already, is Iron Man. Uh, the original one, but man, did I have I watched this movie over and over and over again. This is the movie that, for me, had one of the most memorable moments next to the snap, and that is Shield being run by Hydra. Come on, we forget it. Uh, this movie turned everything upside down. What we knew, you know, the espionage, the uh, the the political thriller. That's what they they call this movie here. Is just the best you know it's it's a cross between the born identity with a bond type movie with uh a super you know of course a superhero movie uh, just uh, bucky come on bucky the winter soldier was such an incredible villain he was so good the fight sequences are the best fight sequences in this movie the choreograph you know uh, didn't have all these you know you know uh, blasts or you know special powers it was hand-to-hand -hand combat you know the uh, when Captain America was fighting Bucky for that first first time uh, before his mask came off. That sequence, the hand to hand, the, the knives, and you know the it's so good. I can watch that over and over again. And uh, um, you know Alex Alexander, uh, the the the, vil the main villain, because you have the. Um, Winter Soldier as you know the kind of the, the 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 baddie, but you have the big baddie in Alexander Pierce as the Overlord, the Hydra person who was actually in charge of the entire Shield. So uh, anyway, I, I'm just kind of once again rambling along here. This is number one. This is, is such a great movie. It's not you can't really I I say it's not a great superhero movie. It is just a great movie. It is so so good and uh, if you guys haven't seen it again or recently go rewatch it it's it's the best so coming in number one is captain america winter soldier uh with almost a perfect score i probably could have just gave it a perfect score but you know uh, anyway this is going on past 30 minutes uh i thought i was gonna only spend like half a minute in each slide but i've gone a lot further than that so anyway uh that is the top 21 movies of uh of the mcu in my opinion there should i do a quick rundown 21 seconds worth okay number one dark world uh or 21 dark world 20 iron man 3 19 iron man 2 incredible hulk uh 17 is thor 16 ant-man the wasp 15 age of ultron uh, 14, Volume 2, Guardians of the Galaxy. 13 is Captain Marvel. 12, Ant-Man. 11, Doctor Strange. Coming in top 10, Captain America, First Avenger. Black Panther, number 9. Homecoming, number 8. Thor Ragnarok, number 7. Civil War, number 6. Number 5, Guardians of the Galaxy, 1. Iron Man, 1. Number 4, number 3, The Original Avengers. Number 2, uh, Infinity War. And then Winter Soldier, number 1. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this, uh, or if uh, if you guys are new to my channel, like, subscribe, comment below, do all that good stuff. Uh, hopefully you guys have a blast at Endgame. Um, I'm watching it probably five times this weekend, <laughs> so uh, I have, uh, have four tickets purchased on different days, but uh, I'll probably see it fifth, maybe even a sixth time, but of course Game of Thrones is going to be on Sunday, so... Uh, so I got a lot of things I gotta watch. This is gonna be a crazy weekend, and uh, but like I said, you know I'll you know maybe do a review if you guys want to see it. Uh, but yeah, with that, thank you guys for watching. Uh, have fun watching Endgame, and uh, we'll catch you next time.